Random question. Are you going to put in the last three pre lab grades? Yes. Um, yes, I'll put in the last keep forgetting about that. They're um, in a pile that I haven't gotten. I, I mean, I got to it, but I haven't put them in. So I will put in those pre lab grades. Um, you will get credit for that work as part of your lab. The um, what else? All of the quiz eight grades should be in, quiz seven, quiz eight should all be in. Uh, quiz nine should be submitted because um, I want to go through that today. So uh, make so I, I think most of those are in now. Um, I have posted quiz ten. This will likely be our last quiz, uh, just because of time and because we've kind of stretched things out at the end here a little bit, uh, slowed things down a little bit. We may we may all fit one more in, but. Uh, this might be it. So it's a three page quiz. Uh, you've got a week to work on it. So it's due next Wednesday. The exam, um, exam three, will show up in the content folder on Blackboard on Monday. Uh, and then you will have a little over a week to work on it. It'll be due. The following Wednesday, um, so that very last day of class, May, whatever that is. So then, in terms of a final exam, um, I'm still not sure what to do about that because um, I guess I guess probably how that will work is I will post something on. Um, the Monday of exam week, and it'll be due at the end of that exam week, and we will work out some times for uh, questions because we wouldn't normally have regular classes during exam week. Um, so we'll, we'll come up with some times to do that. And yeah, I think that'll be okay, and that'll that'll be it. Uh, so please make sure you. You're getting your lab notebooks in uh, if you haven't already. Thanks to those of you who have. The last week of class, which would be um, not next week, but the week after, we would normally also be doing project presentations. Um, so if you want to do a presentation of some sort for everybody, uh, I think that would be great. And we would all appreciate learning what you have to say. But if you did it more as just a paper and um, you don't want to share it, that's fine too. If you did a paper, I would ask first, but if it's okay with you, I would like to share those papers on Blackboard because I know a lot of you are researching really interesting things that lots of people would be interested in. So um, if it's okay with you, I can even take the names off if you want and uh, just post the information on Blackboard so people have it. If you'd rather not share, that's fine too. Um, but those will be, those papers will be due at the end of class also. So that would be um, May. Hold on, let me get the date here. Not, not this week, not next week, the week after. So the, sometimes, like, let's say that, let's say May, May 8th, which is the Friday of the very last week. I can be a little bit flexible with those dates, but I need, you know, and everything has to be done the finals week. Uh, so I want to make sure that there's enough time, that I have enough time to grade everything, uh, including the final before Great, uh, enter grades in. So, any questions about anything coming up in the next couple of weeks or what we're doing? Any questions? Okay. Let's take a look at the quiz. Oops, which I get. Not actually here. Hold on. All right, happy Earth Day. I'm going to take off this graphic because it's covering.
All right, so quiz nine, um, we're going to look at naming some alcohols and some alcohol reactions and stuff like that. So to name the following, uh, again, alcohols uh, are going to get some special priority here. So we're likely going to name this based on this kind of a numbering scheme. So this becomes 2-ethyl. Fentanyl. Same idea over here, except we also have now an alkene to uh, to worry about. So we're gonna go this time. The um, alkene is gonna get that priority. So this is going to be one chloro, sorry, E or trans, one chloro four methyl sorry two pentene for all. Now, if you went the other direction and went one, two, three, four, five, so then it's three pentene, two all, I think that's okay also, um, five chloro. Uh, that, that's fine, I'll, that, that gets credit also. Okay, um, how an alcohol is activated, it is generally Protonated to make a better leaving group because then it becomes water. Water becomes a leaving group instead of hydroxide. All right. And the products of the following reactions. So here we have to decide whether these things are going to be substitution or elimination. In this case, the HBr, we're going to protonate here and then substitute because the bromine's a, a pretty decent nucleophile. And then here we dehydrate because of the concentrated acid. Stop me if I'm going too fast or if you want to talk about more about these. Okay, uh, would you use dilute sulfuric acid or concentrated sulfuric acid for each? And which type of mechanism did each follow? Um, so in this case, we want to use, in this first one, we want to use dilute sulfuric acid because we want the water to add. We want to have plenty of water so that it adds. Um, this is an addition mechanism. from chapter um, five, from chapter five, the alkene chapter. So this is alkene addition. And uh, so you can, you can draw that mechanism here, or it really didn't say draw the mechanisms, it just said which type. So uh, however you express that is fine. And then in this case, we want concentrated sulfuric acid because we're dehydrating, we wanna take the water out. So we wanna put as little water as possible in, we want the water to be, to be out, to come out. We have to show a mechanism for this transformation. Um, so we have an alcohol, we're substituting, but then notice something else is happening because the substitution is not happening at this particular carbon. Uh, in addition, we're losing some stereochemistry here. So this would be an example of where we're going to have a hydride shift. So let's look at this full mechanism together. So first we're going to protonate the alcohol. And we want to preserve that stereochemistry until it is no longer there. So at this point, um, it's important to, to maintain that stereochemistry. We have here our OH2, which, oh, you know what? I've got a wrong 
something here. There we go. Okay, sorry. So uh, OH2, and then we've got that's going to leave. The methyl group is still up, but it doesn't really matter at this point because now we've lost that stereochemical now totally um, symmetric. All right, and now is where we have a secondary carbocation, and we have the possibility of this hydride moving to make a tertiary carbocation. So that's what's going to happen next. Notice that we talk about the cation moving, but the cation isn't moving because the cation isn't a physical thing. It's just an absence of, of something. So it's really a hydride shift. It's the hydrogen that's moving with its electrons. So now we have the tertiary carbocation instead, and we can add the chloride nucleophile to make the product. All right. Questions about that? Okay, propose a mechanism for the following reaction and predict the major and minor products. Um, so in this case, we have sulfuric acid with heat on an alcohol, so that's going to be an elimination. Um, it's probably going to be an E1 elimination because of the tertiary alcohol here. So that mechanism is going to look like this. Protonate. All right, so there's our tertiary uh, alcohol. Now, for the major product, we're likely going to deprotonate here, right, one of these hydrogens, to make the more substituted product. So we've got our water acting as a base here. That's likely to be our major product. But we will also have a minor product, which is the other elimination. Yeah, go ahead. If I put the double bond on the other side. Yeah, so let's look at that. So if we put the double bond on the other side, you mean over here, right, on the left? As the minor product, I'm talking about on the other side of it. Like that? No. Oh, you mean just drawing this up here? Yeah. Yes, that's fine. That, that's the same thing. However, as long as you can express that that's a double bond. Is that, is that your question? Yes, I just didn't know if the stereochemistry was going to be right on it. OK. Like it was E or Z or? Yeah, so let's check that. Um, so whenever we do this, like you saw in the last quiz, we have to watch the stereochemistry because, um, yes, the uh, E products are usually the major products, but Z will also be formed, and we have to watch out for that. In this case, there is no EZ because these two are the same. These are both methyl groups. So whether one is up here, one is down here, or whether we switch those two, we still have the same molecule. Uh, and then the same thing here, this, this one here has two hydrogens here, so it also can't have E and Z. Uh, in order to have E or Z, you have to have different substituents on each on the carbon, so that each carbon has to have two different things. This one does, it's got this on one side and this on the other, but this one over here does not. So these are the only products formed in this reaction. We would expect this is the major product. Other questions about that?
Okay, so now we've got a whole bunch of synthesis to do here, a whole bunch of synthetic uh, transformations. For these first bunch, we're going to start with cyclohexanol. Um, and then for the other ones, we can pick whatever alcohol we want. Cyclohexanol, we're going to go to each of these from cyclohexanol. Uh, all right, so for this first one, I guess maybe it makes more sense to just do it over here. So that's a simple oxidation. We can use any of our favorite uh, chrom chromium based oxidants for that. For this one, that was actually a problem earlier in the quiz. So hopefully, you saw that connection. All right, for here, now we want to eliminate the alcohol, but not really have an alkene here. So that's not quite an elimination. That's going to take a couple steps. We'll have to first eliminate with something like concentrated sulfuric acid, and then reduce to get rid of the alkene, to add more hydrogen. This one is more like just a simple elimination. Yes, you can use chromic acid for the first one. Here's where we have to start thinking about some um, other separate steps. So we know how to make, we know that to make epoxides, we take a peroxy acid and we treat a, um, an alkene with a peroxy acid to make the epoxide. So this is kind of like this problem, plus an extra step here. Uh, so we need one more step to actually make the alkene, which is the elimination. Same thing here. Again, we, whenever we see this diol, these you know this this it's called a, a uh, um, uh, the alcohols with OH is, is right next to each other, and especially with that trans stereochemistry, we know that that's actually something that comes from an epoxide uh, very easily when that's opened up with water or sodium hydroxide or something like that. So. Um, so this kind of goes along with that. Questions about those? So for these four, um, it's asking to synthesize the following compounds, provide the starting alcohol and the appropriate reagent to accomplish um, the transformation. So we have to pick what kind of alcohol we want to start with and then make that from that alcohol. Um, so these are all oxidations, I think, right? Yeah. In this case, we would start with this 2-butanol, oxidize that however you like. This one, you can use anything you want. You can use chromic acid. You can use pyridinium chlorochromate or whatever. Sorry. For the fourth one, we can use one, two, three, four. Yes. Yeah. Is yeah. Whoops. So as you saw, um, in in here. We want to be a little bit careful just because, or not here, sorry, here. Here. We want to be a little bit careful because H3O plus is used in both of these reactions, which are opposites of each other. One is adding water and one is removing water. So, yes, they both use acid and water, but if we want to, um, de if we want to dehydrate, if we want to get rid of water, we need to make sure that we don't have much water around. If we're adding water, we want to have plenty of water around. So I think that's OK. I, I won't um, mark it wrong or anything, but, let, but make sure that you're clear in your head that the conditions are going to be a little bit different 
really concentrated acid to remove the water, more dilute acid to add the water. Does that make sense? So we can use any oxidation here. This one we have to be a little bit more careful. So we're going to start with uh, benzyl alcohol. Question. What's the difference between hydrogen peroxide and uh, CH3CO3H in a O2 is uh, hydrogen peroxide. And that is not uh, acidic enough, really, to make an epoxide. So we would use something like hydrogen peroxide in um, uh, like hydroboration. It's, an, it's more of an oxidant. The, CH3CO3H is a peroxy acid, so it's like a carboxylic acid with an extra oxygen, and that's what's used to make epoxides. So when we want to when we want to make epoxides, we're generally going to use a peroxy acid like this, or uh, the other one that we looked at that's commonly used, metachloroperoxybenzoic acid. So you're looking specifically for things. Yeah, you're looking for specifically this type of a functional group to make a peroxy acid, which is what these are. Yes, so that's what we would use in part five of seven. Uh, actually, is that five? Yeah, five, yeah. So this time we have to be a little bit more careful. We have to only use a more um, limited strength or a weaker oxidant. Regular chromic acid would oxidize this to a carboxylic acid. We don't want that. Same thing here. When you have these terminal alcohols, so alcohols on the end of the extra hydrogens there, primary carbons, you have to use a more mild oxidant to get the aldehyde because the stronger oxidant is going to give you the carboxylic acid. All right, so questions about any of that quiz stuff? Then let's hold on. Uh, these were some lab questions uh, from yesterday, but the thing that we actually stopped talking about yesterday was this idea of electron withdrawing or donating groups on benzene rings. We're going to continue with that today because it ends up influencing reactivity. So it's not just enough to say this is electron withdrawing, this is electron donating. We want to know. What does that mean and how does that influence the actual reactions? So, so if you remember, this nitro group on benzene we said was electron withdrawing because we can draw resonance forms where electron density is being pulled out of the ring thus leaving more partial positive charges on the ring. So this is deactivating to electrophilic substitution because this ring is now less nucleophilic. It has less electron density inside of it. The opposite of that is electron donating. Which is what you get when you have a, a substituent with a lone pair. Right. So a classic electron donating group is aniline. 
lone pair is right there next to benzene. So when we draw resonance to uh, on this, when we draw resonance forms for this one, we're not going to draw like this double bond coming out of the ring because nitrogen can't have that many bonds. The resonance in this case goes this direction. which ends up putting negative charges, carbanions, um, on the carbons around the ring. So something like that. And then we can go around the ring in the same way that we did before, passing that negative charge from space to space. Sorry, these are not reactions, these are resonance. So now we have a, a bond here, and our lone pair moves over there. without getting my head in the way here. Right. Oh yeah, there's another bond there. So we're gonna pass this over to make a double bond. And then there. Okay, so notice where those negative charges are going. When we do this resonance, the negative charges always go to the ortho and para positions. So the position that's next to the substituent and the one that's all the way straight across the ring. So that makes um, the overall then, like we saw before, we might say that In general, we have partial negative charges on the ortho and para positions, and then partial positive in between. So we've added electron density into the ring by looking at this kind of a resonance form and looking at the fact that there are now more partial negative charges inside the ring. So this makes this electron donating, so the electrons are getting pushed into the ring. And then this is also activating because it makes the ring nu more nucleophilic. So that's activating for electrophiles. So these types of, of substituted uh, benzenes are going to be more reactive toward electrophiles. It's going to be easier, energetically speaking, to add electrophiles or to do electrophilic substitution on benzenes that have electron donating groups on them. Um, so to kind of looking at the uh, at some actual reactions and some examples. That's a, uh, something from the book here. Hang on a second. Here's a table from your book. This is on page 289. Uh, and so what you're seeing here is different substituents that could be on a benzene ring 
and how that affects further electrophilic aromatic substitution, that is adding more electrophiles. So um, take a look at the ones that we looked at so far. We only looked at two of them so far, but we looked at NH2 and we looked at nitro, which are kind of the two extremes. So the NH2 is strongly activating, which means that it's increasing the reactivity. So an aniline, a benzene with an NH2 on it, will be more reactive toward electrophiles than, than benzene itself, which is right in the middle. And then the nitro, which is electron withdrawing, is much less reactive relative to benzene toward electrophiles. So some of these make, um, make sense with resonance, with the resonance ideas that we saw. So like nitro, all of these carbonyl-based groups, you can draw resonance forms that show the electrons being pulled out of the ring as we did as we as we did same thing up here with anything with this lone pair you can easily show resonance following that exact same technique where the electrons are being kind of pushed into the ring that way some of the groups however are still activating or deactivating even though they don't have that resonance um, so for instance right here this r group this is like any kind of alkyl substituent so like toluene um, ethyl benzene, any kind of carbon-based stuff on there. Those are still considered activating. Even though carbon doesn't have any lone pairs, it does activate the ring toward uh, nucleo or toward electrophilic substitution. So that's kind of like an, a weird one to sort of remember. And then the halogen, even though they do have uh, lone pairs, and that's because of the inductive effect. So even though halogens have lone pairs, we never really draw resonance forms where the halogens are um, donating their lone pairs and becoming positive formal charge type species. So in this case, the inductive effect of those electronegative halogens pulling the electron density toward them takes over for that uh, takes over and that ends up influencing the reactivity more so that those halogens are actually um, somewhat deactivating instead of activating oh sorry page in the book this is i forgot let me look uh 289 This kind of sums that whole thing up. Now, um, let's look at, act at an actual reaction using one of these and see how it's influenced or see how these ideas influence this because there's this other column that we haven't talked about, which is called directing. We'll get back to that. All right, let's take our aniline. And let's react it with an electrophile, like, oops. Sorry, I'm just looking for some numbers here, but. I guess they don't have it. Okay. Well, let's say we're going to react this with bromine in the um, in the presence of a catalyst. So, in this case, and this catalyst actually is, is you don't actually need no catalyst for um, for bromination of, of an aniline because it's so activated. All right, so we're going to draw this mechanism. Remember that in this mechanism, we kind of end up with a, bro a positive bromine electrophile. So we would draw our, our um, benzene attacking the bromine. But the question is then, where does the bromine attack? Because when we were looking at just benzene, it didn't matter where we drew the mechanism is coming from because 
because it's a symmetric ring. In this case, it's not true anymore um, because we already have something on there. So if we go back up to our resonance, remember that benzene is acting like a nucleophile here. So the most nucleophilic sites on the ring are the ones that, that are going to react with the electrophile. In that case, it's the ortho and para positions. And it turns out that because of steric concerns, the para position is generally much even more favored just because it's not crowded by the other substituent. So we might draw this as something like this. because this solves a couple problems. One, we don't have to have a carbocation, which we know is unstable. So instead we can move that positive charge over to nitrogen, which is nice. Uh, and then we would have something like this. So then for the final step of our mechanism, We finish that elimination. And we have the product para bromo aniline. We can draw the same kind of reaction or a similar kind of thing, but instead of bringing the resonance all the way down to here, we could just show this one attacking the bromine, and that would give us the ortho product. So for electron donating groups, generally the para product is the major product. And we have a, an ortho pro, uh, product that's going to be minor. So questions about that? Going back up to this table then, this kind of explains this leftmost column where the top, and I can maybe emphasize this line a little, there's kind of a line here. The top, of, the top of, of this table, all of these groups, are considered ortho-paradirecting, and the bottom are considered meta-directing. So this means that these groups up here are going to direct the next thing to come on the ring, the next substituent, to the ortho or para positions, the para being more favored. Whereas these electron withdrawing substituents down here uh, are going to have them are going to direct to the meta position. So the question is, is para always major? Uh, yes, although the effect, the, the ratio between ortho and para depends on the size of the substituents. So if you have something like, like a small little fluorine atom or chlorine, it's going to be much less strongly directing than something bigger, like, like one of these or a benzene ring or something like that. Um, so the bigger the substituent and the bigger the electrophile, the more the para is favored. The smaller, the, the more those become kind of even. There's also a statistical issue here because the ortho position, there's two of them, even though there's only one para position. So you're always making kind of twice as much ortho product as you are para. Um, and so as this gets smaller, that actually can change. And that's why I was looking in the book for the specific numbers, because they use anisole as an example, which is methoxy, CH3O as the substituent. And there the ratio is um, 
96% uh, para to 4% ortho. But I didn't see the numbers for, um, for aniline. No, you don't always have to put the major and minor products for these. I think you can, um, you can assume whatever you need to. So if, for example, if you're doing a synthetic transformation where you want to form one of these, that's like the goal of your final synthesis, then you can assume that you make whatever you want and you're just going to purify it out. So ideally you would make the major product but there's always going to be a purification step at the end. Uh, so I think unless the, the problem specifies it, draw like a, like in that quiz question where it says draw the products and say which one is the major product, then you would definitely want to draw the major and minor products and say which one you think is major. If it says just draw the major product or if, if it's a synthesis transformation type thing, you can just assume the major product. Yeah, so you can't pick between the two ortho positions. Um, in this case, in this example, they're equivalent. They're the same. So whether you put the bromine here or whether you put it here, you have the same molecule. So it doesn't matter. But you could imagine a, a, a less symmetric one or something that already had multiple groups on where the ortho groups were actually different. Um, so let's look at an example of that. So here's a dye-substituted uh, alkene. It's actually called metaxylene. But you've got these methyl groups in meta position to each other. And um, we, let's say we want to react this with, with an electrophile, like we want to nitrate it. So we're adding NO2 with this reaction. So whenever you look for the products of electrophilic aromatic substitution, you're going to say, okay, well, let's look here at where these groups are directing and then figure out where this thing is likely to go. So first I'm gonna look at this one. I'll look at this methyl group. This methyl group is an ortho para director. Even though I can't draw a resonance, I know that this is activating and it's ortho para directing. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, this methyl group directs to the ortho Para positions from it. Okay. This methyl group also directs to the ortho para positions to it. So at first, this reaction looks like a big mess. Oh man, there's three different places where that nitro group can go. And the activating and directing groups are all directing to the same places, to all three of those places. So maybe we're going to get three products. So let's draw them and see. Let's draw the, the products of what could potentially happen when we use the directing powers of these, of these methyl groups. So one of the positions they direct to is here. One is here. And then one is here. All right, so what can you say about those three products? Are we going to have a mixture of three products? Why not, Nicole? Or anybody else? Yeah, exactly. The last one is too crowded. So we've got a lot of kind of possibility of steric interactions here for that nitro group to fit its way in between those two methyl groups. Um, it's going to 
it's going to run into some trouble. So it's not stability. It's not that this is less stable. But if you think about in the course of the mechanism, it's unlikely that that nitro group is going to fit its way in there before it reacts somewhere else first. So it's going to go to those outer positions first. And the, the one in the middle is going to be, form much slower. So it's not a stability issue. It's a kinetic issue, how quickly it's going to go. There's a higher activation energy, uh, which makes it slower for that nitro group to get in between those methyl groups. Um, so that's what we're not going to see. And uh, so this one's going to be minor or maybe not formed at all. What about these other two? Are we going to form a mixture of these two? Is the one with the NO2 in the pair position, like the first one, the major one? Um, yes, but it's kind of, but also this, does anybody see, there's something else going on here. These are the same. Yeah, those are the same actually would just have one, or this reaction probably would just have one product, or at least one major product, because these are the same. These are both um, two, four dimethyl nitrobenzene, one nitrobenzene, two, four dimethyl nitrobenzene. If you just kind of imagine twisting that around, you can see that they're the same. So that is the major product here. So that's where it works out nicely, where we can say, okay, yes, we're not going to make this one because we don't generally add in between large substituents like that, but these two are the same. If this were less um, symmetric, like if this were an ethyl group, a CH2, CH3, then we would probably make different products. Okay, so let's look at what happens with the other the electron withdrawing groups. Um, sorry, I lost my place here. Oh no, what happened? Okay, we're back. Yeah, right. Um, I don't have my other thing crashed now, too. This little computer gets very angry about all of this stuff that we're doing. Um, okay, so let's look at the nitration of nitrobenzene. I think, I think it's working now. Did I, did I write H2NO3 up here? Hold on. That's wrong. Not a molecule. It's HNO3. Sorry. Okay. Okay, we're stuck again. Oh, now I can't save the file. Great. Um, Sorry, back in a minute. Anybody have any good stories while we're waiting for the computer to come back? Okay, I think we're back. Yeah, all right, there we go. So now we're gonna nitrate a nitro group or a nitro benzene. Now, the first thing to note on this is this is going to be extremely slow. 
This is going to take a lot of heat. It's going to have a lot of activation energy. The reason for that is that the nitro group is deactivating. It's pulling all that electron density out of the ring, which makes it really hard for this thing to act as a nucleophile at all. So it's going to need a lot of energy to do that. If we go back up to, um, so you can see that here, very strongly deactivated, very unreactive. If we go back up to what we drew uh, Monday for the nitrobenzene, you'll notice that when we looked at its resonance, we found that the most negative positions were at the meta positions here. So opposite from the other, from the electron donating groups. We've got neg partial negative charges at the two meta positions. Likely where the substitution is going to happen here. And you can see that if we do that, so remember that the, um, the electrophile in a nitro, in a nitration is NO2 plus. And so we're going to react this from the meta position. And one thing that you can see here is the second NO2 cation over here. And I'm going to draw the nitro group out here so we can see what's going on. When we used the electron donating group, the NH2, you could, we could, you could see that the carbocation was stabilized in the course of that reaction by passing it up to the nitrogen. Nitrogen can stabilize a positive charge better than a uh, carbocation because it still has a full octet with its positive charge. Down here, we can't do that. Um, we can't draw any resonance that put, passes this positive charge up somewhere else. And in fact, if we try to pass this around the ring, we actually get the positive charge closer to the other positive charge, which is not great at all. So there's no, there's no resonance stabilization at all here. Um, so that's one reason why this is so slow. This ring is, is extremely not nucleophilic, or it's much less nucleophilic than benzene. So then we just have to complete our reaction as normal. We don't have any nice resonance stabilization. And we end up with this product, meta dinitrobenzene. So the nitro group on there is meta directing. And in fact, you can use this table to find out the directing abilities here. So the deactivating substituents here are going to be meta directing. The activating substituents are ortho para directing. And then the weird row here is the halogens. The halogens are deactivating because of the inductive effect, but they are still ortho para directing because of their lone pair. So those are kind of the, the, un, the unusual ones right in the middle here that don't quite follow the rules because they're ortho para directing and deactivating. All right, questions about that? Oh, man. All right, can I go back and save it as the original one? Let's see. We're close to the end of class here, so I don't want to like restart the whole thing. That works. See if that works. Save.
All right, so that's that, that's pretty much the end of the um, the chemistry, the reactions, and things in chapter um, nine. So one other thing to keep in mind: some of these reactions that we looked at last time, specifically adding alkyl and acyl groups to benzene. We're going to go back and edit our notes here. These reactions actually, well, not so much this bottom one, but especially this one, require electron don donating groups. Um, we can say, that sounds a little too strong to me because it's not quite true, but they mostly require electron donating groups. These electrophiles are not as electrophilic as some of these other ones um, like nitro. So you can't, you can't actually, um, in fact, let me reword that because that I don't like that. It's really more that these cannot have electron withdrawing groups. So if you have like a nitrobenzene, you can't add an alkyl group with this reaction can't just stick a methyl group on in the meta position because that benzene is now too deactivated and these electrophiles aren't strong. Enough. Uh, and so they talk about that a little bit in the book on the sections in those reactions. Uh, so that's, that's one thing to keep in mind. So when you're doing some of these synthesis transformations, you, uh, you need to be careful about the order that you're adding things. So you add this one, add, add this one. Um, let's see if we have time to look at one. It may make, I think it's going to make more sense to do this on Monday after you've had a chance to look at the quiz. But I'm going to say, please look at the quiz and please look at the homework, particularly the questions near the end of the chapter that we always have with the multi-step transformations. Because the, the interesting thing about the multi-step synthesis transformations with benzenes is you have a relatively limited set of reactions to do but you have to do them in the right order because some of the substituents are orthopara directing, some of them are meta directing. So if you want the particular benzene you want, you have to do things in the right order. For example, right here, let's say that we didn't have anywhere particular to start with. Let's say we wanted to start from benzene. I'll redraw it for you here. Let's say we want to start from benzene and make product. Sorry, not that. That's crazy hard. Let's do this one. Uh, let's say we want to make that product. So it's obvious that we have to add a methyl group and we have to add a nitro group. And there's nothing else really going on here. So we've got two steps. We're going to add a methyl group. We're going to add a nitro group. But what's really important is that the order is Correct. So we have to add the methyl group first. And we have to add the nitro group second. Because if we add the nitro group first, first of all, it's deactivating. So the alkylation reaction won't work at all. And second, it's meta directing. So we wouldn't get this kind of para select. Get meta, we would get a meta product if we tried to add this first, if it worked at all, which it probably wouldn't. So we have to be careful about that order. Um, so take a look at those homework questions. There's um, there's several of them, page like 30, um, what is it, 30, 310, 311. There's a lot of practice there. Uh, so take a look at those and and try those out and then come with questions on Monday and we can work through some of those. Um, and then there's some on the quiz too, which we can address kind of from the side, but I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do those. All right, so uh, we'll stop there. Any questions from, that, from now?
are there any other questions? Well, feel free to stick around if you have other questions um, or stuff about lab or whatever. I will also be in that other link on that I posted on Blackboard at 11 for whoever wants to join in if you want. And if you want to meet other times, I'd be happy to do that as well. I'll be there uh, Friday also. Um, otherwise, you can always email me. I'll try to get those quiz nines graded uh, as quickly as I can get them back to you. So thanks, everybody. Uh, stay safe, be careful, and I'll see you next week.